Hello YouTube, new character study today. We're taking a step out of the Blohoverse and I'm bringing you into the Nether for a third part. It's all break from the usual routine that we have. I will keep producing one Bloho episode a month, of course, as promised. But there has been some uh, developments lately concerning Nether Beast, so I wanted to make a new episode. I will most likely make five or six parts for this series. There's still a lot to say about the man. So for the, one, for the ones who might not know who he is, I suggest you check the previous parts. I make those character studies about individuals within the YouTube fitness realm that I personally find are fraudulent, that I think are sharing misinformation, that are being uh, pathological liars of sorts. And for now, I'm focusing on two individuals, Bloho and uh, Nether. And you see, if you've watched the parts, that they have a lot of things in common. But what I'm going to reveal today is going to show you more and more that they might be two peas in a pod. One just has hair and the other one doesn't. But remember, he's not bald. So the reason why I'm jumping on that uh, bandwagon again is because one, it's Halloween soon and I think that Nether fits into the theme of Halloween quite nicely. And that's the reason why you have that atmosphere today. The light should turn off pretty soon. It will be a bit spooky. The second reason is that he has a channel, as I explained in the previous part, that used to be focused on MMA and has now made a return to bodybuilding. And when you start touching bodybuilding, if you share misinformation, if you are being misguiding, I will call you out. Or at least if it's informative enough and funny enough, I will. And since I have a lot of information about him, I'm going to continue doing that. I also know that there are people on my channel who watch him and like him. I personally have no ill will towards him or the people who watch him. That being said, I do think that if you watch someone, you should be aware of everything they are and they say. Everything I will be saying in this video is based off of his videos. Everything is very fallible. It's all on his channel or on a mirror channel that copies his videos. I do not invent anything. Everything is based off of facts and sources that, are, that can be checked. Okay, so as I said before, he he's has that new channel and he sort of started it as an MMA fighting channel. He soon transitioned into doing bodybuilding again. I will explain why he did that. It's not out of passion. There's another reason behind it. He continues to lie on this channel. It is actually surprising how much he lies. And that's why I said that he reminds me of Bloho is because every single video there is a lie. And if the video is 40 minutes long, like his Q&As, for example, there will be several lies. And for people who pay attention, those lies are very easy to detect because the guy is not a good liar. Just like Bloho, they're bad at it. They don't know how to lie. And some of them are some of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. And I wonder why no one calls him out in the comments. Well, the reason why no one calls him out is because he deletes comments he doesn't like. Again, another characteristic he shares with Bloho. So let's go over a few things that I heard him say very recently on his channel, because yes, to prepare these character studies, I actually watch the videos of this individual. And uh, it's sometimes torture, sometimes it's just funny. But there are things that were said recently that surprised me with how bold they were. So let's dive right in. Nether claimed that he caught COVID, so COVID-19, and that he cured it with herbs. He claimed that he got the virus, that his entire family got the virus, and that they, they had herbs planted in the garden and they managed to cure it with the herbs. I think, I think that in a global pandemic, when everyone is scrambling to find a cure and a vaccine, if it was curable via herbs, it would have been done a while ago. And if you believe into the conspiracy theories of, oh, they, they would hide the truth from us because they want to sell the, the, the recipe or the drugs to the highest bidder, etc. Maybe, maybe. But think about all of the people on earth who have medicinal gardens of herb. You would th do you think that Nether is the only person on earth that somehow find an herb that actually works for COVID? A lot of people are sick of that stuff. Someone else would have found it. And if someone would have found it, the information would be out there. But no, he found it. He is the, he somehow is the one guy that found something to cure COVID that is like 100% natural. How? 
how possible is that? You tell me. But again, his channel and his entire thing was always that. It's through nutrition and certain herbs, I can cure anything. I can build the body I want. Of course, it's all hogwash. It doesn't work like that. Nutrition is not a magic pill. It, it just doesn't have the potential to do that. It is important for longevity, but all of the courts surrounding nutrition that think that it will give them a, the longest of lives and, and everything, it has its limits. And especially when you start talking about bodybuilding and fighting, it has some very significant limits. This is a direct quote from Nether, who I will still call Nether, by the way, just a little uh, parenthesis here. He still has, his channel is now about bodybuilding, so we'll see how it goes. The reason why I don't name his new channel is because I don't want to give him visibility because he has like 300 subscribers. I don't want people to go listen to him. He, he gives terrible advice. Um, and also I want to protect his family as strange as it sounds. He's, he is stupid because he's now starting to show his kids on camera. I don't think he understands what doxing is because he's doxing his kids. He also doxed his wife. I don't know what goes on in his head, but I personally don't want to be the guy that reveals this channel because for now it's still a secret, more or less. And I personally think that it would not help him if it was revealed, but I'll get to that later. So I will keep calling him Nether. I would appreciate if you didn't plug his new channel into the comments. Thank you. This is a quote from Nether. My intelligence, strength, and physique are too superior for people to accept. That's a quote he said in one of his many ramblings, in one of his Q&As, where he was, he was rehashing, he was going over the fiasco that he experienced two years ago when he got caught faking lifts and he was exposed by the underground YouTube fitness world. He is still extremely mad at these people. So that would be uh, Alpha Destiny, for example, Phil from Fit World Expo. He still vi like vividly hates these, pe these people. Anyone who was a, an active part of making him just reveal who he truly was and who exposed him for the fraud he is, he still has that grudge. For people who follow him because he's supposedly that wise man and that wise, you know, sage on top of the mountain that will give you truth about life, how do you follow a guy like this? He's held that grudge over some internet thing for almost three years at this point. He's still incredibly mad at it. He still rambles about it. And apparently his explanation of why he got ostracized from the community is because he was too much. He was too big. He was too strong. People couldn't accept it. How delusional is that? This aligns perfectly with a narcissistic behavior and disorder. I've never seen the guy express any level of intellect that I would consider to be unfathomable. Strength-wise, he's never showed his strength because he's never actually done any lift where you can actually measure the strength of someone. Using a Smith machine doesn't count. Physique, he had a good physique, but I'm now 100% convinced he was on drugs. And I will explain why later. So look at that quote and tell me, what does it make you think of? It makes me think of someone who has a God complex. And another reason why I wanted to make this video is because even though his channel is supposedly not about bodybuilding anymore, he sells programs. He continues to sell programs. And I've said in part one that the programs he sells are copy pasta, meaning that he has a list of random programs that I've taken a look at. They're awful. He just randomly sends one to someone and they pay him for it. That's a scam. And most of the people who make programs on YouTube are scam artists. You shouldn't pay these people. Learn how to program for yourself. But don't go to Nether for a program. Have you seen the way he trains? 25 reps of one exercise, one body part. Drug users train like this. If you're not sure, you won't get anything from it. And the way he sells those programs is also interesting because he uses very uh, traditional marketing tactics to sell his stuff. And I don't know if he's taken courses in that or if he's just naturally gifted to grief people a lot of their money. But he'll say things like it's a limited offer. He'll say things like first come, first serve. These are catch phrases. These are things that sellers usually tell to clients because it creates a sense of urgency. And because a lot of people, uh, what is the name of that thing? They, they're needy. They, 
Ah, it is a term that's very, uh, very important because it, it's, it reflects that. The lack of something makes them want that thing in a sense. So if they hear that something is going to go out of stock, even if they didn't want that thing in the first place, they'll go out and they'll get it. That's the reason why you have these stores who have 20% off for uh, on your day, because they know it'll get people to buy the product even though they didn't want that. Why? Because we are attracted to that type of marketing schemes. It's very effective. He also does one-on-one -on -one Skype calls, which Bloho also does. And apparently it's to teach people how to train or things like this. As I said, he knows nothing about training, so you would be wasting your hard-earned money. And also the importance of these one-on-one -on -one calls is that it allows him to prevent the information he's going to reveal from being leaked. Because if you do it like me and you make a video for free and you, ex you explain a programming principle, if you're wrong about it, people can copy the video or they can comment on it and say you're wrong. But if it's one on one, since the person who contacted you is most likely clueless in the first place because they fell into your trap, you know they're not going to record the video. You know they don't have the ability to understand if what you're saying is correct or not. So they're just going to go with it. That's the strategy that is utilized by people who want to sell programs, who want to coach, but they know that they don't have what it takes to do that. The reason why Bloho does that is also because of it. Because if you look at, for example, some of Bloho's programs, like Ice Cream Fitness, or some of uh, Nelby's programs, you will see that the ones that are public and out there are trash. They're all terrible. And they sort of had some popularity back in the days for Bloho because no one knew what they were doing, especially with Novice programs. But for him, for Nether, it's a way to get clients, basically, because anything he puts in the public sphere is going to be scrutinized. And with the type of advice he gives, uh, I would be extremely wary also of receiving any advice from him because he gives advice to people on how to grow your wrists and your knees, so joints. Thing is, I've watched some of his videos where he gives advice about the wrist thing. He used to, uh, what is the name of that thing? He used to grab uh, a bolt tightener, tighten it around his wrist and then, and then screw it so that it would crush the wrist, create micro fractures and then eventually thicken. This is a method that is used by Muay Thai fighters when they try to thicken their shins. Thing is, the shin is not a joint, it's a bone. If you calcify a joint, you're going to limit your range of motion, you're going to encourage arthritis in the joint over time. It's terrible advice. I personally think he never did that to himself. I hope he's not stupid enough to do something like this. But imagine someone who's 17 and follows that advice. You're going to end up with destroyed wrists for the rest of your life. And guess what? Once your wrists are destroyed, say goodbye to curls, say goodbye to presses. Your upper body is going to wither and just end up like a stick because you followed the advice of someone you paid for that advice. All of that to say what? All of that to say that there will always be people who are going to be very vulnerable to that type of strategy. And I, personally, I want to prevent that. So if I, I, I've, had, I've received messages from people who told, told me that they used to follow Nether, they used to fall for his uh, strategies and marketing schemes, and they thanked me for helping them see through it. I'm going to continue doing that. Ooh, next one, I'm not going to give you geographical uh, locations because it would be doxing him even though he's an idiot because he doxes him. He doxed himself on his channel, meaning that he gave the location of where he lives. I don't think he understands what the internet is. But basically what he's been trying to do recently is he's, he's trying to get his followers, so the 300 subscribers he has, to come live with him on the island that he now inhabits. What does that make you think of? A man who has a court-like following, who has a lot of power over his subscribers, who is trying to get them to come live with him. Maybe has that happened in his story before? How does that type of situation usually end? Do they usually create a nice little village and they live forever happy? I don't think so. It always ends the same way. The person starts using those followers so that they don't have to work anymore. And surprise, surprise, he doesn't work already. So it's not like it will change his life to actually use other people and abuse them for their money. And then what are you going to do there? Are you going to move to that island and then what? He becomes your guru, 
You're going to follow some guy in his 40s who's unemployed. That, is that your life goal? I think you can find better life goals. He claimed recently that humans have extraterrestrial DNA and that he can prove it. And that he can prove it with papers that are already out there. So, the Netter went on Google, find research papers, peer-reviewed research papers that prove that within humans exists DNA that is not from this earth. And somehow I've never heard of it. Meaning that that type of news would be clickbait material 101 for any news channel that is dying for views and clicks from the audience. And yet I've never heard it. I've heard things much stupider on the mainstream media, things that were much less sensational, that had much less of a solid base in reality. And yet this just didn't make it. I don't think so. And it blows my mind that he can just claim things like this and no one in the comments seem to have an issue with that. No one questions it. Don't, do you guys think, for the people who watch him, do you guys think this would be the biggest news of the scientific community in the last 100 years. If we found out that we are actually not from this planet, it would be insane. He also claims that uh, animals on this planet also have DNA from outer space. Again, I think it's just based on his fantasy of, uh, you know, aliens. He wants aliens to exist so bad. I don't know why. Maybe if he thinks he will be, you know, one of, one of the chosen ones and... He'll be raptured and sent to another planet to become the king of that planet. I don't know. As far as the MMA stuff, because that's what his channel is supposed to be about. It's MMA. He does not know how to fight. For anyone who's done martial arts or a fighting sport for at any moment in their life, for any length of time, it is immediately evident the second you see him hitting a bag. He doesn't know how to throw a punch. He throws punch like kids from the elbow. He doesn't twist the hips. His kicks, you know the kids who watch Naruto in middle school and they start running like Naruto in the hallways and they like they throw the kicks and they do the jutsu. That's how he kicks. Jumping kicks, they're nice in kung fu and everything. And I'm not saying it's not legit, but for the most part, when you kick, one of your legs is planted in the ground to promote power and rotation so that the strike can be strong. No one, look at an MMA fight, a real MMA fight in the UFC. How many times do you see a flying kick? Not a flying knee, a flying kick. Almost never. Why? It's a terrible movement. That's all Nether does. Why? Because a real kick, when you plant your leg, you need flexibility to be able to whip that leg. When you jump off, you modify the angle of the hips and it allows you to open the hips more and you can kick higher because you jumped. So it's just a way for him to live his fantasies of being a, a badass warrior. But that's not how you fight. I can go on and on. I know I have some guys on the channel who know how to fight. And I had a message from one of them who actually told me that seeing him fight solidified in his mind the fact that he is a pathological liar. Never doesn't have any level of expertise in either bodybuilding or fighting. He's a fraud across the board. He's like Bloho. He has no credentials. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And the worst part is that he's so delusional that he actually records himself fighting for fighting. He's pummeling some, uh, I think it's tires. He, he's punching tires because he doesn't have money for a punching bag. And he actually uploads them and he watches them and he thinks, yes, that looks good. Show the videos to any fighters. I'll tell you that guy doesn't know how to fat fight. That guy has never trained. That's the worst part is that I've seen videos of Nether apparently in official matches. I don't know how he ended up there. I don't think that the federations he actually participated in are any serious at all because anyone who scans fighters for their federation would have immediately been able to tell that he doesn't know how to fight. He might have some wrestling background, but in terms of striking, which is very important in MMA, he doesn't have any. And the worst part is that he thinks he does, so he will never actually learn how to throw a punch. It's a whole can of worms, and I'm going to talk more about that. But that's important because when your channel is MMA and you don't know how to fight, I think it's something that needs to be said. 
In terms of why I think he's, uh, he was on PEDs and I think that he's jumping on PEDs again uh, as of very recently, the way his behavior changed is extremely suspicious. PEDs tend to make you more aggressive. And Nether, back in the days when he was jacked, was actually quite aggressive. And that behavior died down, meaning that he had an entire period of maybe one year where he lost all of his muscles, all of his mass, and somehow his attitude also changed. Meaning that he was much more, he appeared more patient, but also more submissive. He, his voice was actually much higher in tone if you listen to uh, the audio. And suddenly, recently, when he started picking up bodybuilding again, surprise, surprise, his voice is getting lower and he has these weird switches in mood and moods, mood jumps where I've watched some of his most recent Q&As, he's unhinged. He screams at the sky and he starts singing. He has those variations of, of mood that are suspicious. And I'm not saying that it's strange to not be just, you know, stable all the time. But when you go from a period of looking like a stick and having zero energy to somehow immediately turning into a lunatic and you start trying to put on muscle for someone who was, sus who was already suspicious, that's strange. So we'll see how his physique evolves. But if he somehow gains a ton of muscle and starts looking like he did back then, you will know why. It's because he's back on the drugs. As far as the uh, old stuff that I could find, it's interesting to see that when he was at his biggest, was also the part of his uh, life and YouTube channel experience where he wore the most baggy shirts and oversized piece of clothing, which is actually a byproduct of bigorexia, meaning that... Um, it's quite common to see bodybuilders with those very big, uh, you know, sweats and everything is large on them. And it's for some of them, not all of them, of course, but for some of them, it's because it helps them hide their body and it hides their body. Why? Because they have a tough, re uh, tough time relating to the body that they have. And it, this is made worse by drug use, by the way. Bigorexia, body dysmorphia is heightened by PD use. And it's funny to see that now that he's small, he's shirtless all the time. Whereas back when he used to be jacked, there were periods of time where he wouldn't show his body. So that could also be because since he was maybe cycling on and off, he had periods of time where he lost a lot of muscle. And when you wear something that's very baggy and large, it helps cover up. So you don't have to reveal uh, the areas of the body that lost a ton of mass for no reason. Just an hypothesis. In terms of training and programming, because I don't want these videos to just be about the men's and about the funny things that these people said. I also want to give you proof that you shouldn't listen to them. And again, he has 300 subscribers. It's, it's not like he has a lot of influence. But once you uh, keep in mind and you understand the things that I'm detailing here, you can apply them to any YouTube uh, fitness YouTuber. Because they tend to all lie the same way. They tend to all have the same patterns of deception. So if you can understand how the patterns work, pattern works with Nether, you can understand how it works for everyone because Nether and Bloho are both extreme versions of the level of decrepancy that YouTube fitness has entered. Most fitness YouTubers have some level of resemblance with these two guys, meaning that they have some DNA in common. They will, they will share some traits and those traits are usually negative traits. And the next one is quite telling. So Nether promoted a certain type of calf, calf training. And his mentality was calf raises are useless. And he had that uh, eccentric way of training the calves where he would be focusing on a certain type of stretch. He wouldn't do the orthodox exercises, etc., etc. That's basically what his shtick is, what he's done. He would just reject anything that's conventional because conventional is bad. And he would just invent something that was arguably much worse. Thing is, he had no calves, okay? And the entire body of Nether was also that big question mark because drugs or no drugs, he had some glaringly weak body parts and yet he gave advice on how to train them. In my opinion, if you have stick legs, if you have chicken legs, you shouldn't be giving advice on how to train your legs. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, you can give pointers, you can say, I'm doing this and we'll see how it works. But you can't go out and say, I have the best methods. And Nether did that. If you listen to Nether, squats are useless for legs, deadlifts are useless for the legs, and you need to do the weird 
uh, unilateral movements he used to do or the, the press of the Smith machine, even though he had chicken legs and he st still does have chicken legs, even when he was on PED, he never had impressive legs. So it's, it's a question of why would you take advice from someone who's not even able to apply their own to themselves? And it's the same in YouTube fitness. Too many people give advice on body parts, but they have that body part, which is weak. So what do they know? Application of the theory is just as important as the theory in itself. He claimed, and we're back to the insane claims that these people have. It's always interesting to see that the people who lie about their strength or their measurements, they can't just give something that could be believable. Like Nero could say, oh, I used to have a 400 pound bench. That would be pushing it, but it would be believable. But no, they have to go for world records. So Nero claimed to have a 500 pounds weighted pull up, 500 pounds. 500 pounds is 10, it's more than 10 45 pound plates strapped to your belt. So it's either that or he counts his own body weight in the 500 pound, which he was what, 220, 230? That would still be 250 pounds of additional weight. I think I've seen recently a guy do that with 260, but this is an insane wood record for a full range of motion on the pull-up. It's wood record uh, category. He also claimed a 270 pound single arm weighted pull-up, which I've never seen in my life. It's insane. It's way above the wood record. And the funny part too is that you can tell that the guy has never really done weighted pull-ups in the past, or at least not at a high level because the relationship he had between his two hands pull up and the one hand pull up is sort of one to two. He, he had the 500 pound claim and then he was like, oh, well, if I, if I do it 500 pound with two hands, then one hand is 250. Okay, 250 is going to sound strange. I'm going to say 270. It doesn't work like that. The angle and the movement of the body when you do one arm pull up is completely different. Everyone will tell you that a one arm pull up is not just twice as hard as a two-hand pull-up. It's exponentially harder. But of course, coming from someone who was never never able to do one-arm pull-up, at least when he was big and he had mass on him, I'm not surprised that he's not able to articulate a proper lie about that type of lift. Next, I'm going to talk about the association. So throughout YouTube fitness, people associate with others. The reason why is because it's a good way to accumulate views. It's a good way to attract a new audience, etc., etc. It's a good method of increasing your outreach. So everyone does it. Okay. Sometimes you do it with the person. So you film with them. Sometimes you just uh, uh, name drop to clickbait. It's part of the culture. What Nero used to do back when his channel had 10, uh, 10K subscribers, I think he had around 5,000, but he had two channels, so around 10,000 in total. What he used to do was, he would associate with people, right? All of which were his subscribers, meaning that he was creating, for anyone who has eyes to see, it was so obvious, he was creating a, a hierarchy where he was placing himself at the top and he, he was basically uh, uh, feeding and uh, nurturing underlings, people who are going to basically be his food soldiers. And I'll get into that more, but it's interesting also to see that he, he's quite, um, he's quite, uh, what is the term, ambitious. Because back when he had that channel, he had big ambitions. He wanted to become a big YouTube fitness channel. And so he was reaching out left and right to get some exposition and exposure, uh, more like exposure, I think, from big names. So he tried with Steve Shaw, he tried with uh, Bugenhagen, he tried with Alex, it worked sadly with Alpha Destiny for multiple reasons. But that's what his, his goal was. He was sucking up to the top brass while at, while at the same time concocting something that resembled a little army of followers, of people who idolize him. And you still have some of these people from back in the days in his channel. They still follow him. They still idolize him. So it worked to, uh, to some degree, which is sad because if you're going to be manipulated by someone, at least be manipulated by someone who is intelligent and who knows how to lie, not Nether or Blow. I don't know, pick a big religion or something or a political party. 
at least you won't be the only idiot. Because if you're one of the only 300 people on earth who can fall for Netherbeast's lies, it doesn't really uh, shine a good light on your ability to handle your cognitive uh, power, in a sense. So, to get back to that, he always associated with himself with some of his subscribers. And I've always found it funny that he only created relationships with people who were smaller than him, most of which were skinny novices. That's, that was the bulk of the people that he was referring to as colleagues. It was people who were 140 pounds and who didn't know how to train. To me, it's a sign of his ego. It's a sign that he didn't want to associate with someone who could put him in their shadows. Someone who could actually expose them, expose him also for the liar that he is. Because let's say he tried that with me. Like, let's say my channel existed three years ago uh, in 2017. And he somehow tried to create a relationship with me. I would have watched three of his videos and I would have told him, dude, you are full of BS. You're a liar. You don't know what you're talking about. And for someone like me, I wouldn't have let go. I would have exposed him completely. And it's funny because there are a few people who have tried. Uh, they saw my channel and they saw that as an opportunity to actually grow bigger. And they sort of reached out. And some of them were PD users. Some of them were just trying to sell their products. And I always call them out and they always delete their comments. It's funny. But I say that why? I say that because the only people who are not going to have that reaction is the people who cannot see through it, which is novices, which are usually people who don't, don't even lift. So that's what Netherbeast associates were, people who don't lift for the vast majority of them. And that also fed his ego, as I said, because he felt superior to them because he could basically tell them how to uh, run their lives. For anyone who still follows that guy, you have better potential than him for strength and size. You are not his underling. He's not your patron saint. You know better than him. You already know better than him. If you follow uh, a program that is centered around compound movements and uh, you actually have a decent frequency, you are on your way to look much better than him. So don't, you know, don't be subservient to these people. It's insane. The amount of submission I see on this platform sometimes makes me question the, 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 the nature of humans. Do humans wish and, and strive to be subjected to that, to be under someone else? I don't get it. But all of that sort of fell apart because of course he was exposed. And the interesting part about that is if he had actually managed to create a channel with, at, let's say 3000 like solid sub subscribers, people who were completely devoted to him, his channel would have survived. The issue is that it, it wasn't big enough to weather the storm. And the stupidity of that individual too is that he's doing the exact same thing right now because he barely has 300 subs and he's already back to his old pattern of lies and deceptions. A channel of 3, 300 subs will be washed away if it gets raided. So he better hope that YouTube never recommends his videos to anyone because it's going to be the end of him again. He just, he never learns. It's insane. <clears throat> he recently admitted in one of his Q&As that, uh, not, not even a Q&A, a bodybuilding uh, update, because he's back to bodybuilding, that he lost 50 to 60 pounds. 50 to 60 pounds as a natural lifter takes decades to build. Like, well, if we're talking like solid mass, muscular mass, it's decades, decades with an S, okay? Someone who spent years training hard would never just let it waste away. I know there's something called muscular memory, but it doesn't mean that you're going to do two days of exercise and all of your muscle comes back. It just means that a percentage of the muscle is going to come back quicker. You'll still have to put in the work. If you train for 10 years and then you let it waste away, you, it won't be back in a year. It will be much longer than a year. That also is a clear sign to me that he was enhanced. He was on drugs. He built, as I said, also the timeline doesn't make sense because he said that he built all of his mass throughout 20 years of training. But I found footage of him in 2015 and 14. He was small and he was huge in 2017. So most of his mass he built in two years. Then he lost it all. That's PDUs. That has a name. It's called injecting testosterone. To me, it's a clear sign that he's enhanced. And that he just lied about uh, lied to people about being natural. 
And the fact that he also constantly underplays the effects of PEDs to me is also a sign. I made a video about it. People who say, oh, PEDs, they don't do that much. Uh, yes, they actually do a lot. They build muscle without you having to train for it. And yet, Nether just says that, oh, it, you... Nether, I don't know if it's because he's really trying to sell that naturals can do anything mentality, where he says, oh, you can outdo PED users with the strength of your mind. That's nonsense. Someone who takes drugs, you cannot outdo. It's not possible. You can have a great physique. You will never be bigger than him. It's not possible. A long enough utilization of PEDs guarantees not necessarily a good looking body, but a big body. And the only reason why he, uh, he would lie about it and underplay their effectiveness is because he was on them. I think it was also a way for him to cope because I do think he's mentally ill. And I think that a part of him believed him to be natural and a part of him knew he wasn't. And I'm not saying he's schizophrenic, but it looks like it. It looks like multiple personality disorder because I don't think someone could lie like this. I truly think that a part of him th thought that he wasn't lying when he said he was natural. I, I, I'm not in his head, but I think that in, in my mind, what happened to him is that he's the type of guy who, if his stats are real, I don't know if they're real, who's 6'2 with long limbs and who trained for a long time without really knowing how to train as someone who's taller and therefore never made any progress. And also because he's stubborn and focused on strength, he basically never made gains. And I think at some point he jumped on drugs, got all of these gains without making any efforts and was like, wow, these are the gains I deserve. I trained for 10 years and I'm finally getting all those gains. So I'm natural. It's just the way I should have looked, but I was unlucky. So I'm natural. Well, using steroids to replace hard work, programming, understanding how to actually schedule your diet and your frequency or to make up for a lack of genetic gifts that you perceive were supposed to be bestowed upon you. They don't constitute being natural. You're still being a coward and you juiced. And that's what he did. That nether beast was a juice head. And I'm going to leave you with... Yeah, one more. Because it's in line with what I just say. And then I'm going to leave you with that. And that will be it for part three. So the last thing I want to say about nether beast was that I don't think he has any love for bodybuilding. I do think he loves the ego boost that bodybuilding gives him. And I do think he has body dysmorphia to a high level, meaning that he has a tough time being a skinny dweeb. So he, he wants to be, build a big body. What happened too was that he understand that, understood that bodybuilding and being aesthetically pleasing is a good way to build a channel. Um, it's either that or being incredibly strong on YouTube fitness. Either you can use your body and you can put thumb, thumbnails of your body being jacked and flexing, or you can you know, publish videos of uh, you, uh, you posing. These videos make the most views. I mean, for me, if I make a video where I flex my abs, I'm going to get 10,000 views. It's just the easiest way for someone who wants to grow their channel. And bodybuilding is an excellent way to do that. So I think he actually did that. He utilized the fact that he was on cycle to promote his channel and his views, thinking that eventually when he would lose the muscle, he could just bullshit his uh, subscribers into thinking it was voluntary because that's what he said. He said he, he lost 60 pounds on purpose. Who does that? He said it was because he wanted to prepare for a fight. He didn't fight. He, he doesn't fight in MMA. So what? He lost 20 years of training for one potential fight. Who would do that? Think. Who would do that? No one. It's stupid. And um, as I said, he, he the, the issue too is that People correlate having a good physique with knowing how to build a good physique, but drugs sort of throw a wrench into the entire equation. Because someone who doesn't know how to train or eat can just take drugs and they'll look big. Doesn't mean that their advice will help you get big. So that's why I say also that outside of the realm of them being objectively, demonstratively bad, his advice also shouldn't be taken seriously because he himself wasn't able to get, get big off of them. And two, he was also, I think, I think his true love is in fighting because I do think that in his mind, he puts fighting as being more, more badass than uh, lifting because he's like Bloho. I think they lack masculinity. They like a, a sense of self-worth. So they sort of, they, they cling to what they consider to be peak uh, masculine attributes. 
and fighting and like guns for Bloho and being violent is up there for them because they, cons they consider that to be alpha, in a sense. That's why also Nether seems so focused about fighting, even though he doesn't know how to fight. And so, uh, because it's also easier, as he said on his channel, to make it in MMA with a good physique, I do think that one of the reasons he used to take drugs back in 2017 was he was trying to create a career for himself in the MMA world. And when you're jacked, it's easier because you're easier to promote as a fighter because people gravitate towards muscle. So if you're a newcomer and you don't have a good record, to get a good fight, it's going to be much easier if you're jacked. So he tried that and thankfully it didn't work. Thankfully for him, because he would get destroyed by any serious pro fighter. And I'm going to leave you with that. So that's part three. I'm going to most likely make six parts. If and only if he doesn't add things to the list, because every time I watch a video, I had three or four lines of details and information because he just cannot stop lying. It's insane. But if you want a good laugh, I'm not going to give you his channel, but it's easy enough to find if you just Google it. Look at him fighting and like training on that bag. It's just, it, it, those, are, those are the first version of silent and mute men's I've ever seen, I think. It's a new form of art. It's performance art. It's the equivalent of, uh, as I said, watching a middle school kid pretend that they know how to fight, you know, when they do the Kung Fu thing. It's a good time. So I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you for watching that talk to study about Nether Beast, and I will be back with part four sometime in the next three to four months. Have a good day.